Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday night class, uh, May uh, the 11th. As you can tell, this class is, uh, platform here is just a little bit different. Um, just needed to make an a announcement prior to the recording of the class. Uh, Wednesday night, we made a YouTube violation by mistake. We did not know that uh, we had bro broken a copyright violation, and YouTube stepped in and stopped the uh, live stream uh, on the YouTube channel. So... I have gone back and and made a video out of the recording that we do uh, every week when we record it for a backup, and I had to cut out our violation. We shared another YouTube video. We didn't know we could not do that, so we want to apologize to our uh, listeners and apologize to uh, YouTube for this violation. As you will notice that the very end of the video is it ends abruptly, and that's where I made uh the cut where we shared that video and uh, the rest after the video was just the ending of the class so uh again i want to apologize for taking so long of getting uh our wednesday night class up hope you enjoyed it uh the link to the video will be down in the description the class description if you want to watch it i really recommend it uh, it's on the subject of rock mercy compassion and it was uh, really good. And I want to apologize to uh, um, Mordecai Ben David, who we the video which we shared with, if we had done anything wrong uh, to harm him as well. It was all a mistake, but it's been corrected. We want to thank our our uh, listeners and watch uh, and those who watch our videos uh, for your patience. And hope you enjoy the class. And again. Join us this next Wednesday as we will um, continue our journey into Jonah. We have two more classes uh, finishing up the book of Jonah. So we'll see you Wednesday night. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are so glad to be here tonight. I think we're live streaming. Uh, Amuela, we discussing whether she's in the helm or <coughs> the room. Uh, it doesn't matter where she's at. Are we good? We're we're good to go. So uh, it's so good to have everybody with us tonight. Of course, you know we've been off for a couple. Uh, we was off last week, so last I'm going to call it a couple weeks. But um, it sure is good to be here tonight. I'm going to say it's so good to have Amuela with us. It's good to have Wendell. It's good to have Ronald. I, I pronounced it correctly that time, Ronald. And, of course, my lovely wife, uh, Annie. And always, it's good to have Terry. Those of you that have joined us tonight from uh, uh, Power Faith Radio, you don't see those people that I just mentioned, but they are here in a Zoom room. And we sure would like to uh, uh, have you come on over into the Zoom room. And uh, you can do that by going over to B'nai Noach Connection with Israel Facebook page. And there you'll see the link. Those of you that are watching by B'nai Noach Connection, I'm just getting all this out tonight, ain't I, Terry? Go for it. Those of you that are watching tonight via B'nai Noach Connection uh, with Israel Facebook page, we want to invite you to come in the Zoom room. Also join that group. Also uh, share that video with all your social media platforms. One more to go. Those of you watching via Tour for the Nation YouTube channel, uh, we appreciate you as well. Please subscribe to that channel. Hit that notification bell that you'll be notified of every video that goes up. And... Without further ado, I'm going to say, Terry, would you greet everybody, and I'll get ready for our Sadaka time. Greetings, everyone. Now, he went through the whole list. I'm not going to do that again, but I, <laughs> I might make a worse mess than what it is. Oh, like we said, if we had went into warp a few minutes ago, we'd have probably been looking at the backside of the nacelles instead of the, you know, the beautiful universe in front of us. <laughs> we would have made a whoop de woo. <laughs> well, is in there shaking her head. See, we could blame her if she's going to be sitting at the helm. Quit pushing those back buttons. <laughs> What's this one do? <laughs> oh, boy, wouldn't that be a hey, wouldn't that not be a journey with Amuela being at the helm, going through space? Hey, what's this button do? Let's find out. <laughs> I would I would immediately call the end uh, up into the uh, helm and say. Uh, okay, M.U.L., you push another button, and I'm running out of dilithium crystals. Stuff. There you go. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, greetings, everyone, and uh, thank you for um, 
coming back with us again uh tonight we did have a a, a week off um scotty had some business to take care of with thomas and stuff and and everything and had to be off with him we of course it's always nice just to take a little bit of a break here and there when you're d- doing this every week it's nice to be able to sit back and relax for for an evening but greetings everyone glad you're here with us have your um uh, your uh note taking uh utensils with you whether it be paper pen pencil notepad ipads whatever uh, also feel free to put in any of the chats uh, all the live stream areas have uh, zoom room has a chat the youtube has a chat and the uh, power faith radio has has a, a chat and i think an email yes. whatever and um it's georgia with us tonight i want to greet georgia, georgia. is with us tonight Gre- I think greetings I georgia I greetings georgia i just uh wanted to say welcome back tonight and everything tonight we are uh we're going into the last lap we're we're finally going into chapter four it's been 18 weeks of uh jonah and we should god willing be wrapping jonah up uh in within the next three weeks i've decided to do it in three weeks because of the way the the passages are broke up there's things in in each little kind of leech section i wanted to cover a little bit so anyhow feel free to ask any questions comments and like Scotty said, come join us in the Zoom room anytime you want. And everything, Scotty, you about ready for Sadaka? I I am ready. I am ready. ready. Uh, I listened to a great uh, teaching this week on uh, on Sadaka and uh, uh, giving uh, charity. And uh, I'd love to hear maybe in the near future um, on. I, I would love to present that teaching it it just it uh it never it never surprise uh surprises me um the depth that sadaka can take you well you want to do it tonight no no it's, we're, we're gonna get <laughs> to the kidding, book of jonah just, we're gonna get to the book of jonah just kidding tonight. with you scotty <laughs> all right all right uh okay uh we're gonna start off with bria uh warn staff War, war staff did warn staff did i pronounce the warn staff and uh, have you got any news for us about uh uh her uh, ronald i no i don't actually and i should have because i was only texting her husband a few minutes ago we were having a conversation that started earlier and continued and i never thought to ask if you can uh, get us an update we'd love to hear one yeah, but okay. we're continue. he's probably still awake so well uh well, he will be. He's, about, he's on the same time you're on now in uh, Eastern time. So I'll text him and see what's going on. Okay, good deal, good deal. Well, we're still giving, Sadaka, still giving Sadaka for that. Also, Veronica, uh, we miss Veronica tonight, but Veronica had uh, uh, Amuela and I was talking to her Thursday night, wasn't it, Amuela, last Thursday night? And she had her cataract surgery. They did both of her eyes at the same time, and uh, her eyes was dilated. She had them. She had the surgery done on Wednesday, and her pupils were huge, weren't they? Uh, so, but she come through. Everything was okay, and uh, uh, so. But we're still giving Sadaka tonight for her for a total healing. Also, um, David Bremer, we're giving Sadaka for uh, him tonight. Also, we're giving Amuela. I got to give two Sadakas for you tonight because someone sent in Sadaka for you last week. And sent in Sadaka for you this week. So we're giving uh, two Sadakas for Amuela tonight. And we really appreciate that person that always sends that in. Uh, we're also giving uh, always for Sally Justice. Hold on just a minute. I'm going to clear this pollen out of my throat. And I'm back now. So we're giving Sadaka for Sally Justice tonight. Also the um, uh, Scott Bryson family. Um uh, we went to, uh, seems like we've been going to a lot of funerals lately, and we went to another one today of a young man in the Bryson family uh, that uh, was in a uh, car wreck, and um, uh, the driver was okay, but uh, he was ejected from the car and uh, 20 years old, and so it's a, a shock to the family, 
And so we're giving Sadaka for them tonight. Also, we're giving Sadaka for Thomas Schaus. He is back in Tennessee. He's almost home. And uh, when he gets home, he said he's just going to lay back and uh, be Thomas for a couple of days. So, <laughs> so also, uh, we're giving Sadaka still for Wendell Parsons and Mary Parsons. Did I give that correct? Did I get that correct? And uh, they had a bout with the dreaded COVID, and uh, they're coming out of it. They still got some uh, strength issues. Is that what you said, uh, Wendell, some strength issues? But Mary... Parsons is going to be going in for an exploratory surgery uh, here in the next few days. Did I get that right? Uh, is it is an exploratory? Uh, open your mic there, Wendell. Uh, yeah, she's going in the end of next week. End of next week. So we're giving Sadaka yep. uh, for that. Are they looking for something in particular? or uh, uh, They've got a mask that they want to go in and uh, remove and uh, do uh, a little work on. Okay, we're 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 looking for uh, we're expecting a healing on that a complete healing. All right, we're going to do some birthdays here real quick. Um, Andrew overall had a birthday uh, since the so we're giving Sadaka for Andrew and also um, uh, Laura Jean had a birthday. Also, my oldest son David Helton had a birthday this past week. And uh, Randy Mitchell had a birthday. And then we're going to give Sadaka in blessed memory of uh, Logan Bryson. That was the young man I just talked about. And uh, Logan Bryson giving uh, Sadaka blessed memory uh, for him. Uh, Listen, all these names we mentioned tonight, we're dedicating this class to them for their merit and uh, for the merit of the healing, for the merit of of a uh, glorious birthday, and for the merit of that blessed memory. And so we want, we want to say one more time, we thank everybody that sent Sadaka in. And you don't have to send Sadaka in, but it, we would greatly appreciate you sending the names in and the problem and the issue. And uh, we have Sadaka here that people have sent in that we kindly spread out, and we'll cover that. And we, Baruch Hashem, we thank the Creator for that. All right, Tom, uh, Terry, Thomas must be, Thomas must be saying, oh, I'm home, I'm home. So, all right, Terry, are you ready to start tonight? Uh, I guess so. Okay, <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, I would I would like to add a, another category, if you don't mind, for Sadaka. That, that's great. How about a Thanksgiving? If someone out there has something that happens or they know something good that happens and would like to give thanks to the creator for it that a birth is- a birth of a child a healing that you may know somebody or somebody got a job good news a thanksgiving good news sadaka uh, like i said you don't have to give but if you know something let us let us know and we would like to share share it with us because um in reality when the third temple is is restored the main offering that's given is the toda the thanksgiving offering is the one that's going to be your main offering and so what a good time to start now is to start giving uh thanksgiving sadaka for for the good things that happens with one another and within humanity that is a great idea thank you so much terry for putting that and, and like i said if anybody knows anything or anything feel feel free to share it you'd like said so you don't have to give we'll we have enough there we'll, we'll drop it and that'll go toward uh, the help of like i said we've helped out with a couple funerals here lately and we've helped out with some covid survivors and just different things like that and it'd be anytime you can share some some good news and and give sadaka for the for a Thanksgiving Sadaka. Uh, matter of fact, I've I've got a book here written by um, Rabbi Rush and Israel. It's called "Give Thanks and See uh, Say Thank You and See Miracles." And there's 190 stories in there of um, when things happened with people, real people, real events. And instead of complaining and going the opposite direction, which some of them started that way because it's human nature. But when they caught themselves, because he teaches his students about uh, having a life of gratitude, and they began to thank the Creator, 
uh, they saw miracles. And so, so maybe sometime I'll share share a few of them. It's, uh, yeah. Just by saying thank you to the Creator and have gratitude and, and good news. So, yeah, that, all right, there, I guess that's the sermon, Ed, I guess. All right. <laughs> All right, Terry. I'm going to turn it, put you on speaker view, and turn it. Scotty, over. how's my voice? I know. Am I still broken? No, you're sounding great. <laughs> you're you're bringing some great power in. All righty, Scotty's been having to help me with my mic. I I have a tendency to lay back and talk real low. So, Scotty's got meters on his on his computer, and we got got together, and he helped me get my mic in the in a better place. And I had it a, f- a little bit further away because. I do a lot of reading, and it was always I was bumping the mic and looking around. So he's been helping me uh, get it repositioned, so everyone could hear me a little better. I was um, a part of a spokesman's gr- uh, club for many years when I in my younger days, and um, one of the things when I do my we did five minute speeches, and one of the things was always when they did my evaluation was speak up. <laughs> Because we didn't have a mic, so we didn't use a mic. So you can imagine, if you can't hear me with a mic, imagine what it was without one. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Again, everybody, welcome. Thank you for coming again tonight. As uh, I said a while ago, we're, we're on the track toward the end of the book of Jonah. It's been a, a very interesting uh, journey. I would I would have to say that even though I have studied this, I've never studied it in the depth that I had studied it this time. And so when I went, you know, almost verse by verse and word by word, there was things in there that I did not see um, the first couple of times I read. And even it's probably going to continue until we get to the to the end here. So tonight we're going to be starting chapter four. And going to try to cover through verse 4, 1 through 4. Now, before I read the first verse, I'll remind you that in like verse 10 of the previous, make sure I am correct on that, I believe that was verse 10. Yes, verse 10 of chapter 3, where, you know, we talked about how God saw their deeds, that they had repented of their evil way, and he relented concerning the calamity. Um, that he said he would bring upon them. And if you remember what's interesting, he didn't actually say what that calamity was. He just told them that he was going to overturn them. He chose a word to where if they repented, then it gave him, he didn't just give a strict judgment. And there's several different words that to be, if, he, if he'd used one particular word, that would, uh, he was going to destroy them. He would have had to destroy them. And he used the word in the Hebrew that means overturned, which meant that if they if they chose to repent, then he would overturn them spiritually and bring forgiveness. If they didn't repent, then he would have brought destruction upon the city. So this brings us to verse 1. And what's interesting, if y'all journeyed with us along this this. Uh, uh, journey of Jonah, and if you're not, if you've gone and started listening from the beginning, what you're going to find out very interesting is really chapter four bookends, like chapter one, chapter two, where we were dealing with Jonah fleeing from the voice of God, fleeing from the mess, uh, message, and we, we discussed why, why he fled from it, and we're kind of going back to that here as we, we close out the book. Because in verse 1 says, you know, when God relented, it said, This displeased Jonah greatly and grieved him. When God did not destroy Nineveh, Jonah got upset. It displeased him. It grieved him. Ebenezer, the, the, the Torah sage, says it like this is the fact that God had relented from his intended punishment of the Ninevites, contrary to what Jonah had been told to prophesy, displeased him, uh, him greatly. He knew, again, we're revisiting why he fled the first, for the, the first time, why he fled. He knew the Israelites would not heed the prophet's cause, as had the Ninevites 
and that even that eventually that they would be conquered by the Assyrians, of which the Nineveh, Nineveh was its capital city. He saw himself as an instrument for an indictment against Israel who had not repented despite the many years of, prof of prophetic admonition. So now we're revisiting this whole thing again. The reason why Jonah fled is he didn't want Israel to, to get a black eye and to, to look bad before, you know, God, that the Gentiles would repent before his, his chosen children, to, his chosen children who were chosen to be the priesthood. The Talmud says that the guilt is brought about through, a, through an evil. Therefore, Jonah was displeased because he feared that the fact that Israel's guilt was reflected not as a result of an admission of repentance he would deliver to Israel, but as a result of his indirect mission to Nineveh, that Jonah would thereby be a cause of Israel's condemnation and would tend to prove that he too was a guilty person. Otherwise, he would not have been selected for the task. According to Rashi, because Jonah said, now that my prophetic message has failed to materialize, the nations will claim that I'm a false prophet. So see, he's, this is this double-sided coin that he was battling with God with in the beginning. On one side, Israel's going to be condemned if Nineveh repents. And on the flip side is, is if they repent and, and, and calamity doesn't come, well, you're a false prophet. It didn't happen. So he was back. It's the same double-sided coin that we dealt with in the, in the opening of, of the book. The Torah scholar Radal says, it says, it explains Jonah's concern was not motivated by pride. So he wasn't motivated by the pride as this would be out of character for whom God would have chosen to be a prophet. Rather, his concern was that the wicked scoffers would not attribute the annulment of the decree to the repentance. Instead, they would uh, complacently say that Jonah's prophecy was unfounded to begin with or that God lacked the power to even punish them. The result would be that the institution of prophecy would be discredited. This was what Jonah feared. And and would result in the in the profan the the blackening of the name of God. He'd be profaned upon the wicked. The wicked would profane him because because of this. And it says, and it grieved him, because Israel, who did not repent, as explained above, he feared that the Ninevites' repentance would reflect adversely on the Israelites, who, in spite of repeatedly prophetic warnings, had not repented. Thus, Jonah felt that he had, in effect, condemned Israel, his people, by doing, by, by doing this miss, mission. Anything before I go to the next, Scotty? So... An interesting question is asked. When it says that this displeased him and he was grieved, when did that happen? When did Jonah become displeased and grieved? See, Jonah was not told that Nineveh was spared. From the fact that Nineveh still stood, he realized that his prophecy would not be fulfilled in its literal sense. Therefore, the events of this chapter, to chapter 4, the events of chapter 4 here, which tell of us of Jonah's grief at the survival of Nineveh could only have taken place after the 40 days had passed. Remember? The message of Jonah, in 40 days you're going to be re uh, overturned. That was the message. 
So when he saw that Nineveh had not been destroyed after the 40 days, he knew they had repented and God had granted forgiveness and relented on his his, uh, evil decree against the city. The rest of the chapter reviews the events, of course, in greater details. Verse 2. Flip back over here. Splits it up here. Verse 2. This is very interesting. It says, He prayed to Hashem and said, Please, Hashem, was this not my contention when I was still on my own soil? Now, when, when you look at this, this those of us in, in the nations, and we read this in, in the English, it appears that it says, he prayed, to, uh, he, prayed to, he prayed to God and said, please, Hashem, was this not my condition? So that looks like that's what his prayer was. Because there's a comma. And then it says, and said... And there's semicolons and all this. We look at it, the way it's broke down. We need to remember several things. In the original Hebrew, there was no chapters and verse. It wasn't in English. It wasn't in the culture of the, of, of the English. English, I don't even think, was probably a language at that time. <laughs> Let little less the, the punctuations of the English language was not around. See, in the Hebrew culture, when we read, when we read here in the Hebrew, it says, Vayi uh, tefaleo es Hashem vayomer. That's the Hebrew of what I just read. Uh, that um, he prayed. And said, in the Hebrew, you need to understand, these were two separate events. If you remember when we talked about prayer, the same word here, see, the word prayer in Hebrew is tefillah. means to make a connection. But here in the Hebrew, it's uh, vayi uh, tefillah. Of course, the, the va is and, and he prayed. It's translated prayed to phileo. If we remember, we discussed that word. To phileo means to do a self-assessment, self-judgment. He was self-assessing himself before the Creator. And then it says, and he said, by Yomer, and he said, it's a separate event. When it, it, it is a separate, a separate thing. So I find that in, I find that interesting. Here we have two separate events. That Jonah was praying to God, and he was also speaking to God. Two different realms. Because it doesn't say the speaking was prayer. What can we learn from that? That see, sometimes holding a conversation with the Creator is not necessarily prayer. It's prayer in general. But it's not um, to phileo. It's not one where you're, you're doing self-assessment. Assessing your own soul, your own actions, your own thoughts, your own words before the Creator. He was doing that. Then, then, he, said, then he said, Please, Hashem, was this not my contention when I was still on my own soil? I therefore had hastened to flee uh, to Tarshish, for I knew that you were a gracious, 
compassionate God, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and relentful of punishment. It's the rest of verse 2. It says, according to Sephardim, the phrase that he prayed to God stands alone refers to prayer not recorded in the Scripture. So we don't know exactly what he said in his, in his, in his personal prayer prayer between him and God. But after he had completed that prayer, Vayomer, he said, referring to the following, which is what, what we read, with uh, please Hashem. An introductory phrase meaning in the Targum, uh, accept my petition. See, again, there's no punctuation in Hebrew. So he asked him to, to accept his um, petition. Then it says, was this not my contention when I was still on my own soul? <coughs> soil. I've got that same Tennessee pollen that Scotty's got. <laughs> um, if we remember, those who wasn't with us here in the, when we first began the book, see, Jonah was at... Sukkot, the Feast of Sukkot, or in English, the Feast of Tabernacles. It was during, the, I believe it was, uh, the water drawing libations that was going on when he received the message. And see, where he was in Jerusalem, he was to go to Nineveh, which was in, in Assyria. But instead, he fled to, to, to Jaffa, Got on the port. It was the closest port. Got on. The, got in a ship at Jaffa, and head out. Headed out into the Mediterranean Sea. He went the opposite direction, and so he was reminding the Creator. Says, "Was this not my contention when I was in my own soil that I was going to, to uh, flee?" This me- this message, this mission that you wanted me to give. And we talked a lot about it because of what the effect of Israel not repenting and also the wicked saying it was a false prophet. He goes on and says, I therefore had hastened to flee to Tarshish, attempting thereby to avoid a second prophetic communication regarding this matter. See, he got the first one there. Go to Nineveh. But he hadn't got the second part of the message. So he fled before he could get the second part. And he said that was his contention. That's why he left. He didn't want to get that second part. Because he, he knew what it was going to be. He had already prophesied in Jerusalem and different places about, about the repentance issue with his own people. Now he's being sent over to Nineveh. The people who were, who were non-Jewish. They were a Gentile city. But then he goes on, he says, For I knew that you are gracious and compassionate. I was aware that if they would repent, you would accordingly not destroy them, and they would consider me a false prophet. Again, we talked about the wicked using slanderous words about the Creator and about His prophet, that they had no power and that they were false. According to the sages, However, the implication is, I knew that their repentance would be accepted by you and that their example would ultimately cause evil to befall a reluctant Israel which ignored prophetic calls to repent. Jonah maintained that he knew all along that it is the nature of God. You might want to write this down, that it is the nature of God. God, the Creator, to be forgiving if the Ninevites repented. Jonah knew that forgiveness was one of God's characteristics. He knew what was going to happen. Matter of fact, we talked about how that the uh, the Gentiles was ready for repentance. In the first part of the book. Then where it says here, it says, 
uh, where it says God here, it's the word ale. It is the Aleph Lamed, ale. Some pronounce it as L, but it's ale. It's pronounced with a long A. Rashi commented on the use of this the name of God in the 13 attributes of mercy, Exodus 34, 6. Notes that in this context, that El, unlike Elohim, which describes God as just, refers to his attribute of mercy, just like Hashem, the the four-letter name of God given to Moses. Ebenezer, therefore, interprets this also means it's powerful, which it is, uh, means powerful to act as his wisdom dictates, to be merciful even though strict justice might dictate otherwise. See, that's an, another aspect of the word, uh, of, the, of his name Elohim, which means judge, just, strict judgment. It also represents a vastness. And I've taught on, I've taught on the, the, on its meaning, meaning vast, without end. Matter, matter of fact, the, uh, um, among the Hasidim of Israel, they refer to God as Ein Sof, incomprehensible. Because you can't. The human mind cannot comprehend that which is always has been and always will be. We can't comprehend that. And, and the name El is power. The power of God can also be the vastness the eternal power of the Creator. Then it says uh, that He is compassionate, He's gracious. This is this this graciousness here is to assist those who have fallen but cannot rise. As Ebenezer talks about in Exodus thirty four six, to reward those who are not fully deserving. See, we, see, we have here, we have Jonah. He's going through an, a, a part of the 13 attributes of the Creator when he says, you are gracious and compassionate God. You are merciful. You are gracious. You help those who are fallen. You reward those who are not fully deserving of, re, of, of reward. That's his graciousness. And compassionate. The Rachamim, which means mercy. Rachem, mercy. Some beautiful songs out there. Uh, one by, uh, I think his name's Avraham Mordecai. Or Mordecai, or I can't remember which his name is, but he's got a beautiful song. It's called Rachem, means merciful or compassionate. Rachem or compassionate here in this verse, means like a father to his child to prevent them from falling, to lighten their punishment when the sinner calls. He is merciful. He lightens it. He is slow to anger. You defer your anger in the hope that the sinner will repent and you do not hasten to punish him. And we've talked about that in the past. I think, Scotty, wasn't it one of our lessons in Jonah? We talked about um, how the Creator can will hold off punishment. Let's just say for a family, for generations, because He knows that one's, one of them is going to be making repentance. And when that one makes repentance, it brings brings compassion for the generations. And we, I think we talked about, you know, you could be that one, that one in your family that makes repentance and makes a, it makes a difference in the, in the judgment of your family. And, and the Creator will withhold His strict judgment through His acts of mercy. Can I throw something in here? Go ahead. Uh, Terry, uh, this class that I was talking about that i've listened to about three times all this week on uh sadaka on on kindness that that's what it consisted of was kindness um 
You know, many people think God operate in the same time we we operate. We we, we but God is outside of our time. Am I saying that correctly? He he's not confound he's, by time. Well, he created time, so therefore he's not bound by it. He's not right. bound by any of the creation. He created time. And and the rabbi that I was listening to, uh, his name is uh, uh, Rabbi Wolby, uh, mentioned in, in uh, and he read it from uh, one of the commentary, the sages, uh, that uh, the the kindness that you show forth today can plant a seed and it be birthed in one of your offspring. It was right. real, real great how he, how he presented it. And we don't know the, the depth of what we do today. Just like you said that the creator can see, I'm going to use the term down the road for us, but he, you know, he sees that uh, kindness coming forth. What what is that a word that you say all the time about about the human? It's the it's it's how we use human terms to de- to describe the anthropomorphism. The, yeah, to de- describe the divine, we have to use we use human terms, which are not his terms. They're ours because we're the ones that are human, trying to explain the divine, and so we use like the word anger here. He doesn't really get angry. Because that's a human trait. Anger is not one of his traits. But one of his traits is strict justice. And when he applies strict justice, it appears to us as it's anger, but it's not. Right. So it's, again, we're on the human side of things. So we have to uh, explain things through, through us. So there is a deep, and I'm going to use the word, I don't like using this word because some people can take it wrong. But there's a deep Hasidic, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to use the word esoteric. I guess it might be a better word than mystical. Way to explain the vastness of God and when you're saying he's outside of time. See, when you when you look at Isaiah 45 and, and the creator says, I, he says, Ani Hashem v'enod. I am God and there is no other. There is no other. There is a very deep teaching on the no other, the vainod. And one of the things that that is taught as a, uh, and I'm going to use it from from my point of view of that big A word that Scotty says, and and how you say that word again. I'm coming. I'm coming. I got to push more buttons. I know. Get back over here. Anthropomorphism. And yeah, I, anthropomorphism, I that which we're going to be talking a lot about that word here, you know, over the next several, okay, probably month People or People saying what? What? Because it's actually it's even talked about here in, in Jonah using these using these human terms. In the vastness vastness of God, and that He's outside of time, as is, is, is Scotty and I was talking about is Ani Hashem V'enod, I am God and there is no other. God is eternal. And some of the the ancient sages taught to way to understand this in our realm is that the creator, for the creation to even be because there was only God. That's it. There was nothing else. There is no other. There's no other ale. There's no other power. He's the only exist. That's why we don't say, well, good luck. Well, that's putting your power into something other than God. And it takes a long time to get the little be these little things away from out of us. But he had to hollow he, in 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 a in a humanistic description, he had to hollow himself out. And so, therefore, the creation is within him. If, if we could look at, at, at it physically, you've got God, and then the creation is inside of him. So he's, and that's why we say he's outside of nature, outside. That's because he envelops us. 
He completely envelops us. There is no other. That's why idolatry is so wrong. Idolatry seeks to replace God with something else, something man-made. And so he is slow to anger. And he can he 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 doesn't he doesn't have eternity because eternity is a time and a time is a creation. There is no time in in God. There's only time where we're at. Because mostly our time it relates to this earth moving around the sun for us. I probably made that as clear as mud, but We'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk, you know, like mud on a mud on a windshield and hit it with the wipers. You know, sometimes it gets that way. Um, but we'll talk more about that later in, in 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 further teachings and stuff. Then he goes on. He says, Jonah says, uh, you know, continuing with his attributes, abounding in kindness, chesed. Matter of fact, it's uh uh. The Rav Chesed, Rav, great, mighty um, kindness. To those who are in need of his kindness because they lack merit. According to Ebenezer, this is the kindness that extends both to the righteous and the wicked. He shows kindness to the wicked every day. Every day a wicked person, that a wicked person wakes up. He's been shown kindness. Every time he puts food in his mouth, quenches his thirst, that's kindness. Every breath he takes, every heartbeat he has, that is a kindness of God. He hasn't wiped him out. He gives the wicked the time they need to make a repentance. As a matter of fact, Ezekiel 18, he even asked the question, do I desire the death of the wicked? No, he doesn't. He desires their repentance. So he gives them all the time they need. Anything before we go to verse 3, Scotty? Verse 3. So now, Hashem, please take my life from me, for better is my death than my life. Where he says, now Hashem, please take my life. Literally, the, the Hebrew word there is soul. Take my, he says, take my soul from me. And spare me the sight of the destruction of my people. Jonah foresaw, uh, which, which Jonah foresaw would eventually befall Israel in punishment for, the, for their wickedness against God. Since I was in an instrument in bringing it about similarly to what Moses has said when he declared to God in Exodus 32, 32, says, if you will not forgive their sin, then blot me out of your book, which you have written. One of the other Torah sages says, this was a sign of supreme love for Israel. All our, this is, this is the, the Jewish people, uh, people here, is all our ancestral leaders, the leaders of Israel offered their lives on behalf of Israel. Moses, Jonah, all of them, they didn't want to see Israel fall. It says, For better is my death than life, since they will cause me to be a, uh, to cause me of being a false prophet, or accuse me, because it says, since they will accuse me of being a false prophet and profaning the name of God, it would be better that I would be dead. So again, both sides of the coins. If Israel is punished, or if he's proclaimed a false prophet, making it look like God was a false God, he would rather be dead. God, take my soul from me. Verse 4. And Hashem said, Are you that deeply grieved? He questioned him. The Creator says, are you that deeply grieved? Serfano renders this as, are you that deeply grieved that you 
were an instrument. It says, are you that deeply grieved that you were the instrument of goodness? And I granted that I granted to Nineveh. Other Torah sages says, is it correct for you to be grieved? Does my compassion to them deserve your anger? Jeremiah 8 or 28 9, where it says, Here God reminded Jonah of the principle given in Jeremiah 8, uh, 28 9. The prophecies of evil tidings are always subject to annulment based on repentance. Prophecies of good tidings, however, are inviolable. Avoidable. Therefore, Jonah could not be accused of a false prophecy since a prophecy of destruction is subject to change. But when I, you know, later on here, hopefully in, in a short period of time, when, when Hashem, when, when the Creator said to Jonah, are you that deeply grieved? It reminded me of another conversation that he had. Why are you annoyed? Why has your countenance fallen? His conversation with Cain, which we're going to go into a study of that because it's a very good study. But this reminded me of that, where the Creator is questioning the attitude that that man is having. You know why? Why? Why are you? You know are, why are you so deeply grieved? You're an instrument of goodness. You brought repentance to people. And we're going <coughs> to, in the last verse, when we get into it, there's, we're going to see this. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit about this, this issue of, of him dealing with Jonah on this. But I wanted to just stop here because the, uh, the, I want to cover um, verses 5 through 10 on the, on the, ne the next class because it kind of, shifts a little bit here when he's uh, when he went left and went outside the city and stationed himself i want to cover that in a separate in a separate class for next week but tonight again we are brought back we it's chapter four begins it bookends where chapter one began with jonah leaving and the reasons why he fled the service of god and now we're right back at the same situation again. Before the announcement, after the announcement, before the repentance, after the repentance, we're bookend with the issue of Jonah not wanting Israel nor his God to look bad. He doesn't want Israel punished and he doesn't want uh, blasphemy to be brought upon the Creator. And that begins chapter four. Go ahead, Scotty. Awesome, 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 uh, awesome. Uh, you left us at a cliffhanger, so that that's what I call a cliffhanger. So everybody, come back next week. Uh, well, that wasn't intentional. <laughs> yes, it's it's just that you know, hey, I I can go two more hours if you want me to. I ain't got I a problem, you. but I don't think we, our audience would hang around. <laughs> Yeah, Some yeah. of us has got to go to work in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I used to tell them when I had <laughs> in the tent, you know, in my uh, uh, previous life, uh, I would get started and I'd say, I know some of you have to be at work at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'll be through by then. If you just want to hang out, I'll be through by then. So uh, I think so we're cut, cut from the same cloth in that area because, see, you know, we don't wear watches. That, that yeah. We didn't yeah. wear watches then. We don't wear them now. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Hey, I want to uh, thank everybody. I did not say uh, something about our B'nai Noach Fellowship folks that are listening tonight, and we've got some folks over there listening. Um, uh, and so Christina and uh, uh, Tiffany 
are listening over there, and we've got somebody else, but they uh, I'm, uh, they haven't commented, so I don't know who they Oh, that's Tiffany. Uh, I needed to hear this so badly. So Tiffany says, uh, thank you, uh, Terry. Also on uh, uh, Benign Rock Country with Israel, we have some folks listening, three. And then also I want to bring up something that uh, Wendy Shepard on YouTube you I talked about uh, the the uh, gratitude, uh, Sadaka. I'm going to use it that way. The Thanksgiving, uh, Sadaka. And Wendy uh, Shepherd uh, said uh, that she wants to uh, give thanks for little Caleb. You remember? Uh, yes, we pray for Caleb. Caleb. Uh, uh, for she wants to thank the Creator for his healing. And so we we've got Sadaka. Matter of fact, I'm just going to do that now. If I can do that now, Terry. And uh, so. Uh, we really appreciate Wendy and uh, Wendy. We are giving Sadaka right now for uh, Caleb thanking the Creator for his healing. Uh, funny thing that happened over there. I mean, I'm trying to have to push this dollar in there. Funny thing that happened over there. Zakia came in and and said. Uh, uh, Mordecai Ben David. Yeah, Mordecai Ben David. That's his name. Now, Thank you. I thought it was somebody that she was saying she wanted. To add to the Sadaka list. So no. I said, is that somebody wanted to the Sadaka list? And she said, no, that's the one Terry Singer Terry stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. if, if y'all can look up on YouTube, Mordecai Ben David, for some reason, the last part of his name was leaving me. Thank you, Zach. Uh, thank uh, thank Zach, you, yeah. Zach. Yeah. Um, Mordecai Ben David, Rachamim, where he's singing and there's some uh, uh, young yeshiva boys that are, that are sitting there and singing with him. It's in Hebrew, guys. It's in Hebrew, but... You don't need English. You just let your soul grab a hold of him singing mercy, because that's what it that's what it what it means. Rakamim, have rakamim, have mercy. You just let your soul listen to it, and it's. I'm already getting the chill. It's one of my favorites. Mordecai Ben David is amazing. Um, also, uh, Avraham Freed sings it as well, uh, and it's 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 really really good now terry you uh yes, th- go ahead i'm sorry no go ahead you shared a uh uh a music video on uh uh benay Noak fellowship uh the yeah from uh uh nefesh mountain yeah i guess well, the name I, of it i listened to that over and over and over and i just cried. oh isn't that you know it's it's the it's it's the english and the hebrew lift your eyes unto the mount you know into the hills it's it's amazing. I love I love their music. I, w- I wish there was a whole lot more of it. Of course, it's it's touches you and I because it's our mountain music, banjos yes. and yes. I, I want to challenge everybody to go over to uh, <laughs> yeah, Nef- Nefesh Mountain. China. Yeah, Nefesh Mountain. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. Beautiful song. Beautiful song. So I was trying to get a hold of Thomas. I found out he got home, but uh, Thomas said he was in bad need of a. Uh, food, a drink, and food and drink, and, and a smoke, uh, that's cigarettes, and and a shower. So I don't know which way he took those, in which way he brought that out. But I, I wanted to call him and have him uh, greet everybody. But uh, obviously his. You, you and I have seen him eat, so we know eating went first. Eating went first. <laughs> I'm sure eating went We've first. We've seen him eat. So uh, yeah, so uh, uh, we love Thomas. Well, I've seen Thomas change. Uh, greatly over the past year and a half that he has been here in Tennessee. So, uh, uh, all right, all right. Well, Terry, are we coming to a close? I'm ending with uh, verse 4 right there. Uh, 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 Ronald said, what is the song name again? Un- unmute there, Ronald, so you can ask uh, that way. Uh, which one are you talking about, from Nefesh Mountain? Yeah, I thought we'd have to have that discussion. No, no, the Netfish Mountain one I love. That's my type of music too. As you said, banjos, mandolins, real music. Uh, the one you just mentioned by Mordecai. Oh, Mordecai Ben David. I Googled it's, it's, him, it's, but I, it's, there's a lot of stuff there, and I thought, well, I better ask the name of the song so I know which one directly to go to. If first. you'll wait, just let me – I'm going to go out and find it real quick, if you don't mind, Scotty. Just hold on a second. You, you'll be fine. I think you'll to... still, your face will still be there. You can just uh, minimize us and find it. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell everybody again that we love to have an Amuela in the – 
Uh, Amy, well, I just see you at the helm, honey. I know you want to be in the engine room, uh, but I, you are, because she's over there in the, she's posting text. Uh, she's over there greeting people in the uh, live streams, and so she really covers it all. And uh, we thank her so much. And also, Wendell, we're going to continue to pray for uh, Wendell and his wife, Mary, uh, that they get uh, completely recovered and that the exploratory surgery on Mary is uh, uh, goes well. And uh, uh, Ronald, while he's looking for that, I want to thank you for coming, uh, an, a favorite. And uh, then my lovely wife, uh, Annie. And uh, so we've got a lot of people listening over on the live streams tonight <clears throat> i gotta get rid of a little more pollen so uh, how you coming there terry you got it well you, you muted so i you're good you're good uh also i want everybody to remember that the um uh the uh, the um let me find it here again i want to give you that name of uh, the bryson family uh we did a uh we're doing this tonight in blessed memory of logan the bryson family and all the names that we mentioned tonight um, we want to thank everybody for sending that Sadaka in. Uh, so Terry, how you doing? You're, he, he's looking. You, you might have to find it and send it over to him on Messenger. No, here I got. I'm going to post the link. Hey, so we go we'll find it. <laughs> okay, try that one. I think that's the link. All right. Did you see that, uh, Ronald, on the chat area? Yeah. Yeah, you can just click on that. You might want to click on it now because when we close, it will be like disappearing ink, 